Yeah. Congratulations. Um, what does it mean to you to lead this club to a, a season, a fourth season? Oh, the, the, yeah, the same as what it's meant the last the last three. Yeah, it's a big honour, um, but um, not getting too caught up in it. There's a you know, big job to do um, for me and the rest of us to take the club back up the ladder. So, um, yeah, looking forward to doing the work. Was there ever any doubt in your mind as to whether you wanted to do the job? How did, how did the process work? Do you go to Simo and say, yeah, I'm up for it, and then there's a fight? How does it, how does it play out? Yeah, there's been thought into whether it's time to move on, and... I think particularly ahead of last year, um, I think I did my hammy about this time last year and um, gave it some real thought of whether whether I just hand it off and, and get on with the job. Um, spoke to a few people and they all they all said give it one more crack and fortunately I was able to play a bit of footy last year so probably not as much thought not as much thought this year into handing it over but um, I'm always a big a, a big advocate for the the player vote. And seeing what the, what the team wants and who the um, who the boys want to lead them, so um, I think that's always a fair indication of who should take the role. So um, yeah, put my hand up for it again. But um, I've always thought it's it's never a one man job. You know, I'm, I've got the C next to my name, but there's um, there's plenty of guys who um, carry a fair load behind the scenes with the leadership stuff around here. You say there's a big job to do. I'm guessing you mean based on what happened last year. Does that sort of really you're already fired up, but Trying to turn around what happened last year as the captain, it's it's a big role for you. Does that excite you? And what could possibly be? It does, yeah. Um, what really excites me is thinking about um, five years from now where the club are going to be, and with the the draft hands we've had over the last couple of years, we've got some really good high end young talent in that are going to play a lot of footy for the footy club. Um, so trying to trying to worry about you know the, the year we're going into and, and getting things right for this season and bouncing back because we've seen over the last few years how quickly sides can turn around but also trying to groom these young boys and, and show them um, right from wrong and uh, there's so many great leaders at this footy club that they can lean on um, and the exciting part is yeah as I said in four or five years from now these guys are going to be carrying the club and um, I think the, the club will be in really good hands. Does that change your, your leadership at all though, knowing that that's I guess what's really exciting for this footy club now, that five years down the track? Um, no, not really. I think you've always got to, no matter how well you're going as a footy club, um, as a leader, you've still got to have an eye to the future and what needs to be done to make sure that, you know, hopefully success is sustained. Um, but there's no bigger there's no bigger job than getting it right right now and making sure we're, we're ready to go this year. And how do you think you're placed for that, that five year period down the track in terms of leadership? Who have you got coming up underneath you? Uh, well, the guys that are always talked about, Tommy Brass has plenty of footy left in him, Oscar Allen, um, Duggo. And then uh, I think from the last two years, some of the kids we've drafted have, have come in really mature. Um, a lot of them have had experience living out of home at a young age and have been through a hell of a lot in their lives at such a young age. I think that helps them grow up and mature um, to a level beyond their years. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll see some really exciting development from those guys over the next 12 months. If, if we can get them on field, a few of them have, have battled some injuries over the last 12 months, but if we can get them on field, we'll, um, we'll get a really good insight into how we're going to look over the next few years. How's the body? Good, thanks. Yep, going well at the moment. Have you had to change much to, to make sure you, you have you know, more durability and getting through the season? Yeah, when when you go through the um, the injury cycle where you just feel like you can't get right, you, you're just constantly changing things and trying new things. Um, so I've tried a lot over the last few years. I felt like I found a pretty good routine last year, played a bit of footy. Um, I only ended up missing two or three games through injury. Um, there were other games with COVID, so uh, I feel like I've found a, a pretty good routine that works for me. But um, yeah, it gets harder this side of 30, Duff. Um, Tommy Barris coming on to the uh, as vice captain, that's significant. Do you have to start mentoring a person like that to maybe be the next one? Or um... uh, yeah, I, I don't think I'll sit down and, and mentor him necessarily. Um, you you got to give the next generation a bit of space to spread their own wings, so to speak, and figure out who they are as a leader. And um, but in the same breath, you, as I said before, you you're thinking about the future and. Um, what guys need to be steered in a certain direction, and um, but he's he's um, 
he's ready to go whenever whenever he needs to be. Hence why he's been made vice captain. Um, and luckily for us as a footy club, there's a few guys under him who could probably do it as well. So um, Tommy's on a really good, on a really good path. His development over the last probably 24 months has been been great for the footy club, and um, his footy went to another level last year, which is probably the most important part of leadership is getting your own backyard right first, and he's certainly done that. From, from the outside looking in, West Coast are probably one of the hardest clubs to predict how they'll go this year. What about internally? What do you think the group can achieve? Well, you've always got to have high expectations as a footy club, otherwise you, you lose sight of um, where you want to get to. So we want to win, win games of footy again. Um, we only did that twice last year and it was, it was disappointing for different reasons. But um, yeah, we're, we're in the same position as every other side is at this time of the year. Um, we haven't played against any real opposition yet, so it's hard to get a gauge of where we're at. But we've, we've done what we wanted to do over summer, but that gives us no entitlement to winning any games at all this year. So um, all the hard work's ahead of us. I guess the names on the whiteboard still look excellent. Does that give you hope that injuries aside, you could relaunch this year and, and perhaps just prove some of the data is wrong? Yeah, you always need a bit of luck with injury. So um, fingers crossed we can get a few more of our um, senior boys on the park more consistently. But um, as I touched on, we're starting to get some really good young young talent come through as well to kick a few of us boys out of our jobs. So um, hopefully we see a few of them flourish this year, which I'm, I'm sure they'll get plenty of opportunity. We spoke about that young talent. One guy who probably has a similar start in his career that you did is Campbell Chesser. Have you spoken to him about you know what you went through in those early years and mentoring him in, in that sense? A little bit, yeah. I get along well with Chess. He's a, he's a great kid. He's, he's one that's lived out of home for four or five years before he moved over to WA boarding. Um, he was boarding in, in high school over in Victoria. So he's, um, he's a mature kid. Um, he knows knows where he wants to get to. It's just a matter of getting his body right and he's, he's got all the tools to get there. So um, he's extremely driven. He, um, he trains his backside off every time he's on the track or in the cardio room. Um, so he's got a really good attitude. Um, if he can get his body right, I'm so excited to see what he can do. We've seen you this year train a little bit of halfback. I know you played there a couple of times last year. Is that something you're looking forward to doing permanently in footy games going forward? Yeah, yeah, it could be you know, another avenue to trying to keep the body on the on the park more consistently. Um, what gives me the luxury of doing that, I suppose, is, is having um, a fully fit Yowie again. Um, Ruben Jimby coming in, who has played a bit of halfback as well at East Perth. So um, there's a bit of scope there to potentially rotate with those guys across halfback. But um, yeah, we'll just see how we go. It's always been a confident club, Luke. How much was that dented by the um, the events of last year? Uh, I don't think the confidence was was dented. I, I think we're confident we can bounce back, but the the pride took a little bit of a hit um, for us individually, um, but for us as a footy club as well. Um, yeah, we we were um, you know for, for different reasons weren't competitive last year, and that was at times. Uh, Roller coaster of emotions, um, embarrassing, disappointing, angry, frustrated. But um, I think overall we we found a way to navigate ourselves reasonably well and find a way to, to give some young guys plenty of exposure to AFL footy. And there was no harsher introduction for a few of those boys, Hoffy, Rhett Bazo, um, some of these young guys coming in. There was no harsher introduction to AFL than, than last year. So they'll learn from that. Um, they'll play plenty of footy for the footy club. Um, over the years to come and um, similar start to a few of us had back in 09 and, and 2010 when we, we copped the wooden spoon so um, I suppose it's a blessing in disguise if you get exposed to that at a young age you, you realise how how tough AFL can be, it's not all beer and skittles and um, yeah those guys are hopefully in for a few more years um, or in for a few more successful years than what we had last year. Have you let it go? Please, the media bring it up all the time, but internally, do you feel like you've, you've let last year go? Are you looking forward? Um, yeah, I think we've let it go. Yeah, we. You can't let it go fully because obviously the the emotion side of it is, you know, it still hurts, and we we're embarrassed by what we dished up. But um, yeah, it certainly gets talked about. I think externally more than internally. <laughs> Jack Darling is seeing Ryan Daniels in Seven West claiming the newspaper painted him as an anti-vaxxer. How's Darlin been affected by this? Um, Jack's been great. Yeah, we obviously don't talk about it with him. I, I can't comment on that. I didn't know that was happening, but um, he's he's fully bought into the direction we've 
wanted to head this pre-season. Um, he had a slow start pre christmas with his back, but he's, he's trained really well since Christmas, so um, he might have to speak to Jack and Ryan about that. Uh, Luke, you spoke about the five years down the track and then also this year. How do you guys sort of juggle looking forward as well as ensuring that you have short-term success as well? Yeah, there's always a, a really fine balance to find with that sort of stuff. You, you want to give exposure to the young kids and make sure you're getting as many games into them as you can. Um, I've used Andrew Brayshaw as a great example over the last few years that how yeah, quickly guys can go from coming into the system to being an absolute A grader um, if given the right exposure. So you want to you want to get games into these guys, but you also need your, your top end talent out there to um, try and win games of footy, um, but show these guys the ropes on, on game day as well. So um, yeah, I, I'm pretty confident we'll find a really good balance with that sort of stuff. Does that affect your thinking about your future? You're obviously out of contract at the end of this season. Does, does that impact you at all? Uh, Mate, whether I was contracted for five years or one year, I think I'd still go about this year the exact same way as I will. Yeah. Does what Geelong did last year give you some hope and belief? Luke, we often compare birth certificates. Mm. They're actually older or were older than you last year. Yeah, yeah, it, it does, definitely. It probably gives a lot of teams... Um, a lot of teams hope that they can, they can do what they did. Um, I think what probably... Um, is more relatable to us is the turnarounds that Sydney and Collingwood have had over the last few years. Um, both finished 17th, I think, um, in their in their respective years before jumping back up to top four. So um, the way the game's played these days, that competition equality, um, if you get things right, you can turn around quick. So um, we're hopeful we, we can do that as well. Is there, is there a shift in game style a little bit? It does, it's only an eye on it seems you guys are moving a bit quicker. Is that, I mean, the whole AFL is, is it, are you trying to do that this year? Well, we were ranked 18th for speed of ball movement from our back half last year, so the only way is up, Rhino. Um, <laughs> wasn't hard to go a bit quicker, but yeah, look, our, our transition's been a bit of a focus um, for us over the pre-season, but you, you can't get caught up in worrying about one thing in footy because other stuff can fall down really quickly around you. So we've tried to, um, have our finger in a few different pies, so to speak, over the, over the summer. And um, I think we've found a pretty good balance on what we're working on. But um, yeah, hopefully there's a, there's a few more, um, uh, that's what I'm looking for. There's a few more um, side effects to what we're doing than just speed of ball. Hopefully our contest gets better, um, our de team defence, um, we really have to improve on everything we were doing. So fingers crossed that's evident in the first few rounds. How good is it to have Oscar back, particularly with JK retiring? Yeah, it's handy. Um, I think we all forgot how good he actually is. Some of the stuff we've seen him do has been a little reminder. Um, as I said, we haven't played against real opposition yet, but I've got no issues that, or no doubts that he'll um, he'll have a good season if he can keep his body right. Luke Edwards and Xavier O'Neill. Luke, do you see footy for them this season? How are they going this process? Yeah, both both have showed over the last few years when given the opportunity, they're, they're more than up to it. So um, you need really good depth at AFL clubs to be successful and um, I hope they can do more than just provide us good depth. I hope they can crack in and really give us something on game day. They've shown that they're, they're more than up to it. So um, yeah, if given the opportunity, no crimes with seeing those guys do what they do. Isaiah Wind obviously had his issues before Christmas with the Geelong stuff. Um, how has he sort of responded to that since coming back in the new year? Uh, mate, he's had a really good attitude. He, he came back in really good shape um, after Chrissy. Um, he's had a few things off field that we've, we've, we've asked him to do and he's, he's done them all. He's passed with flying colours, so to speak. So he's, he's training really well as well. Um, he made a mistake and that'll get dealt with in, in due time. But from what we've asked him, um, from what we've asked of him to do around here, um, I can't fault him. He's been great. There's a lot of talk about a lot of the draftees, Noah Long. Looks pretty impressive as well, sort of a bolter. Have yeah. you seen him? Yeah, he's um, he's exciting for us. He's got plenty of small forward craft, probably something we need losing um, Venners and Junior over the last couple of years. So um, he's another kid who um, has probably come in more mature than just an 18 year old. So he's uh, he's going to be a ripper for us. Yeah, really good kid. Grew up in country Victoria and um, it's fitted in really well over here. Have the players come back fitter? ever in your time than they have this time. A lot of blokes look noticeably lighter than they have at this time of year in previous years. Yeah, I think um, certainly fitter than 
the last probably four or five years, no doubt. Was that a pointed request from the club, was it, when you went away? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, look, when there's, there's smoke, there's fire, and a lot of people externally were calling us unfit last year, and they probably weren't completely off the mark with that suggestion. So we, um, But internally, we were always going to figure out, once we'd review the season, what we needed to get better at, and you, you can't do anything unless you fit in this, this game anymore. So our, our first step over the off-season was making sure we came back in good shape. Um, so our sports and uh, our strength and conditioning staff um, did a hell of a job putting together a program that was different to years gone by. Um, the playing group was certainly more driven. There were you know, more numbers training together every week and um, it was a really enjoyable off-season. Actually, the boys had a really good time doing it. It was, it was hard work, but um, I think we're starting to reap some rewards. But as I said, that gives us no entitlement going into the season that we're going to win any games. So. Plenty of hard work to do still, but um, I think we've started the year off on the right foot. How's um, how's Rhett going? Yeah, Rhett's good, mate. He's um, he's still obviously um, taking taking as much time as he needs to come back to the club. Um, there's no timeline on that, but we we can't wait to have him back. Um, I thought it was um, disappointing some of the um, obviously no one in this room, but. Some of the media treatment he copped at the time was, was disappointing. Um, I remember being with him on um, the Sunday after the accident and, and to see a 20-year-old kid heartbroken because his um, pictures of him are popping up online and cameras are rocking up at his gate um, no more than 24 hours after everything had happened was, was disappointing. So um, I think if you guys can keep um, respecting his privacy as much as possible. Um, It'd be appreciated, but yeah, we uh, can't wait to have him back. It's a good kid.